Hey everybody, back with uh, another video. Again, wasn't planning on doing this. Um, I started a thread on Clove and I'm refurbing a crazy climber. And then I brought the power supply that I cleaned up um, as best I could down to the bench to bench test it and started running into some issues. So if I'm learning something, I might as well film it and hopefully it helps somebody in the future there. So. Uh, the bottom line is I'll do a quick overview of the power supply. This is out of a Crazy Climber, Tato Crazy Climber power supply. It is kind of a standard Tato type um, or Taito um, setup. And basically you have your AC power that comes in, goes through the line filter, comes out through a couple um, interlock switches as well, as well as the power switch, which then when those are switched on, it basically jumpers this over to here which then feeds the input of the transformer um, th the line filter comes here line filter goes there then loops here out from the fuse line fuse and line filter into the transformer out comes the isolation into this where which is kind of interesting is your service outlet is um, powered by the isolation transformer your fluorescent lights connect right here on these two as well as your monitor so your monitor fluorescent light and your service outlet are all powered by isolation power as well as as you can see here your DC switching power supply now what's kind of interesting is this DC switching power supply has another noise filter so you have this line filter here then you have a noise filter here comes in and I might take off this case eventually but as you can see here there's a 12 volt fuse negative 12 volt and then down here it's negative 5 and plus 5 and I already mapped out the pins so you can see um, pin 1 and 2 are at the bottom those are your reset and tilt and then you have six pins for ground four pins for five volts two pins over here for plus 12 and then a minus 12 and a minus five for crazy climber i don't believe minus five is used the minus 12 is going to the coin door lights and then you have the plus 12. so to test this and i'll put this on um, a meter i just basically wired up a one ohm resistor which would be onto the five volt um, line <clears throat> so I have one going to ground one going to positive and that would um, equate to about five amp, a five amp load one ohms equals five amps at five volts um, so I'm going to plug it in and then we're going to probe around here I'll put it on the tripod okay so we're going to turn on here oh my gosh you can't see that there we go. <laughs> go to um, DC power, and let me try to do this while I'm on the on the bench here. So, without touching anything, there's our five volts, and we have plus five volts. That should be our negative twelve, and we have nothing. That's our minus five, and we're good there. And that's our plus 12 and we're good there 12.2 now there is individual adjusters for all of those voltages I'm I'm okay with 12 volts typically can go up to 12.5 and there's no load on it right now so I'm, I'm good with leaving it like that but there is if you can see in here without me electrocuting myself um, a plus 12 a minus 5 adjustment and down below there's actually a plus 5 adjustment so this power supply is actually kind of interesting <clears throat> because a lot of people actually end up rep um, replacing them. But the fact that it has fuses for each individual voltage line and it has adjusters for each vol voltage line, I kind of like it a little bit. You know what I mean? I don't know why, but it's standing out. Now, these are all original caps and everything. Um, I, it's not a linear power supply, so I doubt we're going to see any ripple voltage um, per se, but just if we wanted to check um, ripple voltage on the AC line, if I can get in here, 
right, let's see here. Dang it. Right there. Point zero zero three volts of AC on the um, five volt line. Nothing on the minus five. And there's no load on the minus five or, or plus twelve, so you wouldn't expect to see anything. But this again is with a one amp load, and we can see that my negative 12 volts is not good. So let me go ahead and power this down. All right, we're going to where's my leads at here? I'm going to go to ohms. There we go. I'm powered off now. And we're going to check our, our minus 12 volt fuse right there. And we get nothing. But we do have something on all the other fuses. And I already tested them. So this fuse is bad. I'm going to pull it out. Oh, whoops. <laughs> we'll test it again out of, out of circuit here. live video is what happens and it is gone so the first thing we could do is uh, just replace that 12 volt fuse minus 12 volt and just see if it um, fries again um, it's a one amp fuse slow blow so let me see if I want to do that alright so usually I like to use my little fuse saver here um, but I only for like thermal resistors, so I'm not. I think thermal fuses. I mean, I think they're thermal. Um, but, I, but I only have a um, three amp, seven amp, ten amp, and a two amp. So not that big of a deal. So I'm just going to replace the fuse with a one amp slow blow. And let me see. Do I have everything hooked up still? Let's hook up my negative lead. And let's power on. See if it blows. Let's see here. Go to DC volts. And let's see if we have any voltage. Yes, we do. Minus 12. So there might be a, a short in the coin door lights that caused that to blow. Um, something happened that caused that to blow. And that only goes to the coin door lights, that minus 12. So that was probably our issue. We'll have to check our coin door lights uh, before we power this up. And I thought it was going to be more interesting than that. But I will come back and let's bench test the, power, the um, PCBs. Um, the other, actually, I'll, I'll go ahead and take this board out and um, show you the board and maybe I'll put an ESR meter on some of the caps just to see how bad or good they are. Alright, I'm unplugged, but another inter a interesting thing or nice thing about this power supply is it seems like it's very easy to service. Um, just unscrew these two screws at the top of this cage. Sorry about that. Just got a little tiny screwdriver here. So the line filter gets unplugged. Then you can take this off relatively easy. And yes, it is dirty. And then you can just slide this board completely out. Just like that. I mean, how much easier can you possibly get to service this thing? I'm just looking at the solder joints there. It looks pretty decent. <clears throat> um, all the connectors. I mean, we could reflow that, honestly, but... 
It looks fine to me. I don't see, you know, right off the get-go, I'll look for cold solder joints, but I doubt it. I don't see anything. And then let's go ahead and put the ESR meter. There are a ton of caps. Most of them look like 10 volt, 220 microfarad. Um, 1,000 microfarad, 25 volts. So we have some 1,000s. And I don't think the schematic exists for this, but the um, there are quite a few caps on here. 220, oh, 2200, not 220, 2200, and 100 microfarads <clears throat> for the most part. So let me come back with my ESR meter. All right, I tested all of them, but I'll just show you a couple here real quick. Whoops. Let's see if I can do it this way. Here we go. And let's go this 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 you can see uh, all low, low ESR doesn't mean the capacitance is good but I mean these caps seem fine to me I tested all of them whoops so yeah so I'm not gonna do anything with this power supply it seems it's working seems fine I don't see any cold solder joints even um, probably because this thing has never been oops I'm just moving the the connector around a little bit just to see if there's any flexing or anything it looks fine so on to the PCBs I'm not even going to clean it I'm just going to leave it like that okay here's the PCB no idea if it works or not just filming a case um, I need to do something but it is filthy I, hopefully you can see that pretty good Let's see if I can zoom in very dirty it's got some mud stuff on it from the cabinet had some like mud wasps or something like that in there but uh, that's the soundboard I don't know exactly what this is I guess this is some type of security you know thing going on but this is the sound port it has a Yamaha I believe a Y yeah three eight eight one zero that's a Yamaha sound chip and then there's some ROMs there I don't know if those are the sound ROMs or what and then we have probably, oh, I guess that is the CPU up there because I don't see a CPU on this. So inside this, whoops, inside this must be a, a CPU to run the game. Inside this little green thing. Interesting. And let's see here. 5101 RAM. Some ROMs. Again, it's dirty. I believe the connector all the way up here is our um, color, so it should be pretty easy to get this up and running on the bench. And then here you can see some of the mud wasp nests that were on the PCB. So I'm going to give this thing a bath and then come back and power it up on the bench. All right, so before I clean the board, I figured I'd wire it up real quick. I just did some jumpers, red, green, blue, sink, ground on my color and then positive 5 volts to both sides of that capacitor there and I just ohmed it out on the connector this is a uh, ground 5 volts and then plus 12 is right here uh, the next one right next to the 5 volts but that's for audio only so we won't have audio let's see what happens looks like it's working so no issue there. That's anticlimactic, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like it's working good. So we got a good working board set. I have no idea. I, when I picked this up, I believe it was not working. I don't know what was wrong with it. Um, monitor seems to work. I tested that. PCB's working, which is fantastic, obviously. 
and I could test the audio if I really wanted to, but I'm not going to waste my time. The board's working. I'm not going to set up a... Unless after I wash it, it breaks, then I'll do a proper JAMA adapter or something. Cool. Looks good. All right, the board's all cleaned up as best I could. Well, not as best I could get it, but I definitely cleaned it. Let it dry, everything's, I removed this, removed all the chips, cleaned the legs. So there's a good chance that this might not work. Well, not a good chance, but there is a chance. Let's power it up. All right, and it's working, which is nice, because I didn't want to screw with it. Looks pretty good. I don't see any graphic glitches. All right, so board's working. I just need to go work on the cabinet, get a speaker. I cleaned the um, harness and everything, so back to working on the cabinet, I guess. I don't know how much of that I'm going to film. All right, everybody, it's uh, about six, seven months later. I've had this project, you know, in the basement, and like most things, I, I get bogged down with more of the cabinet work and stuff. Like this one had... A lot of it was a lot of water damage and swelling here so I had to get that out I need to still put some wood hardener on it and um, bondo this and make it smooth and probably repaint and all that I already have a working PCB I have a working monitor so I'm like damn it I just want to play the damn thing so <laughs> screw the cabinet work for now and let me come in here and I don't think I filmed the inside of this um, but I've already like kind of restored the coin door. Let me get it while I got some light here. So I've been doing on and off parts. I'm just here's my some coin door parts. I painted the coin door, as you can see there. That needs to go on and be reassembled. The lower coin door is jacked up. We need to get Take Man to reproduce these Tato Tito lower coin doors. I don't know what's in that bucket. All right, my coin mix. My harness, you know, just random shit down here. Um, but anyway, I just want to clean the inside one more time. I already cleaned it out and blew it out when it was in the garage. But you can kind of see where the little what mud wasps or mud bug, I don't know what the hell they were. Um, but they build some different nests in various places um, even inside here the where you pull the open up that I had to clean all of that crap out but anyway let's see how much I can get done and and make this video at least somewhat you know interesting and maybe I can actually play a game there's my power supply down there so I'm gonna get to wiring everything up or all right trying to get some light on here but it's starting to come together I had to um, there was this bottom piece here. Well, actually, let me get some more light on it right there. But And it was broken off and split. So I actually screwed it down, as you can see right there. And glued it and clamped it. So that's, that's working. And then just slowly cleaning up the water log or the moisture. It's getting the you know puffiness on this, um, whatever you call this, MDF or something like that. So I'm just using a razor blade, kind of scraping off the looseness. Then I'll, I will use some wood hardener and harden it up. And if it's uneven, I'll use some Bondo, I guess. But I'm not really worried about that right now, as you can see right there. Um, let's go to the back side. One thing I do like about this cabinet is to slide in the monitor, you can actually pivot the monitor mount down and it has these the spot here that you rest it on so the monitor can lay flat and then you can raise it up and kind of um, screw it in with the bolts honestly if you're going to do a reproduction cabinet this is a good cabinet to do it on because everything is basically bolted together with um, L brackets and stuff like that so but you can see the bottom got everything kind of wired up. I don't know how this is supposed to go. 
honestly. If it's supposed to go on top and kind of, or if it's supposed to screw in there, or, I have no idea how, how that gets mounted. The other thing that's kind of interesting is, look at the color codes on this connector. It's a connector V is what it says there. I don't have it plugged in. It's like an adapter. And this adapter says E and it goes sink, you know, ground, then red, skip a, <laughs> skip a th spot, um, blue and green. And I don't know what kind of monitor would be like that. That doesn't make any sense at all. So the other thing is I think it came with a Cortec monitor. Let me show you kind of the craziness that was going on. Get back in this light. Maybe I'll cut that part out. Maybe I won't. Um, but you can see this somebody basically the Cortec monitor that was in here is like brand new. It's really nice. I think I'm going to put a Geo 7 back in instead. But um, this has red, green, blue, and then it has a couple sync wires. And they really just had these ends loose plugged in to this thing and that's probably why the monitor didn't work is because one of these connections became loose so I need to repin this out for a Geo 7 um, which won't be too hard so um, yeah and the power cable too for the it's got a power adapter here and you can see somebody just probably wire tied, cut off the connector that they needed, and then, you know, um, electric taped it together. It's kind of crazy. So just slow progress. Um, I think it's ready to go though. I mean, I'm, oh, oh, I also did the speaker. So just updating, solder that in, positive over here, negative, got my ground on. I repainted the um and sanded and repainted the speaker grill so it's not going to be perfect but it's getting cleaned right, up a well little my bit. camera is messing up but i figured i would um my viewfinder on my camera i'm going to repin this out um, for geo 7 i think that it's composite negative sync so i need to break out this um white line here um, and put it in a different Molex connector, like a two pin. But um, first thing we need to do is extract the pin here. So just, we're gonna take out the, the white, if I can. Come on. There we go. I'm actually going to take them all out. All right, I spared you guys from all that, but there we go. Red. Red, green, blue, and ground, and then I have a sink, just like that, and we should be okay, but I may have to be, um, either try this on horizontal or vertical on the Geo 7, or loop, loop it, um, depending, so we'll see if that works. All right, got everything, I think, for the most part, hooked up. Got my power, my ground, to my monitor. I have my sink hooked up over there. I don't know if that's, I think that's horizontal, but you can see it hopefully in there. And then I'm going to, I was going to look at plugging it in, but I do not have a ground plug. So I grab one of these, I'm going to hook it up. Left should be neutral. I'll verify that um, coming into the cabinet and all that stuff. I've done videos on that, so I'm not going to do it again, but. I will link to doing something like this. All right, got that all wired up. Let's plug it into the outlet. 
Um, I don't know if the switch is on or not. Nope. Alright, we'll go to the front. Cross your fingers here. Where's that power switch at? Hmm. I got it monitor. Heard something. All right, we got, I don't know if we have a, we got a sync issue, but it looks like it's playing. I see Crazy Climber, I kind of see it. Let me screw with the sync. All right, if you can see it, I moved my sync over one spot. Let's see what we got here. I also put in the marquee light and we're better. We just have vertical scroll, so let me adjust that real quick. See here, vertical hold right there. Hmm. Hard for me to see. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to loop the horizontal and vertical and get sync going to both of them on this Geo 7. So let me let me do that and I also have to fix the credit counter thing. I don't know if the credit counter PCB board works, so I'm going to go back and fix that too. All right, so I got my just a little loop just crimped um a Molex connector right there. 0.156 so that hopefully will take care of our sync issue or our slight scroll now this is the credit board that goes inside and what I noticed was this capacitor here was busted loose and if you look at it on the bottom side the pad is completely broken away so I need to desolder that and solder this little capacitor back in there because it's broken away hopefully this board still works I'm not sure but I'm going to do that off camera, just fix that little pad, tie it over right there. I think that's where the trace is, yeah. All right, All right got my little credit board on, plugged in, and I also have, if I can see, there's my little loop on my sink. Power this thing on. Hopefully it comes on. See what we got here. Uh, it's still scrolling. Let's see if we can coin up. Okay. I got the horse I got the vertical scrolling to stop um, just by adjusting it and my coin mechs work but that sound is definitely screwed up so I'm gonna coin up yeah that sounds terrible but my joysticks work but they're they need to be rebuilt they're very sloppy and I don't know how to actually play this game I know it's kind of tough like to see you get stuck here there we go. Uh oh. Oh. There we go. And I'm going to have to put this board on the bench, but we're going to save that for another uh, video. So that's it for this video, guys. I got at least the thing somewhat back together and working. Sorry for that noise. <laughs> All right.
Sorry for that noise, but that's it. Till next time, crazy climber. Cheers.